channel thank you everybody for tuning in join me on today's video guys where i will be doing a comparison between the proxima tuna and also the heimdaller tuna i have already done a comparison between the proxima and the steel dive i've also reviewed many tuna watches on this channel uh, and a few months back i was actually lucky enough uh, to review the creme de la creme the Seiko Marine Master Tuna, courtesy of Nilo, a subscriber, a fantastic subscriber who sent it in for me to review. So, plenty of tuners on this channel, uh, and this was sent in to me. Uh, so, I thought it's a perfect opportunity rather than review it on its own, I'll review it or compare it against the Proxima. As uh, if you did see my review with the Proxima versus Steel Dive, you saw that the Proxima was so much better in the way that it was made um you know and the whole quality around it but it was a bit more expensive as well than the steel dive so you know the steel dive even though i haven't gotten with me today is still the benchmark to measure the heimdall against uh, and of course we know the performance of the proxima and to see where this sits does it sit in between is it better in any way shape or form now i mentioned in my you know previous videos on, on tuners that there is a hell of a lot of variants from seiko themselves uh, and there's that many variants uh, when it comes to homage watches also so i don't know exactly what model they homage i'm just gonna keep it simple and just call them a tuner now this won't be a usual detailed comparison as i normally do with the paper and the numbers uh, i'm going to compare it slightly differently because i do have already a slight measure of you know the steel dive and the proxima so i'm trying to keep this concise if possible okay so let's move the box out of the way let's get underway with this review uh, before we do that wrist check keeping in with the theme of the tuners i've got my baby tuner from seiko the yellow fin all right so let's do some dimensions let's see where they sit diameter of 48.2 millimeters now compared to the heimdaller 47.4 just slightly smaller thickness on the Heimdall at 15.1, 14.2, so about a mil thinner. 45.2 on the Proxima, 44.2, again a mil difference. So there's a mil difference, give or take, on either side, whether it's the diameter, the thickness, or log to log, which I find quite interesting. Let's look at specifications. So the Proxima on the left has a double dome, AR coated sapphire crystal. Uh, I have reviewed both the normal version and this NH36 version with this uh, funky little dial here. Uh, so this runs at Seiko Epson NH36. It's got a full 316L stainless steel case. You've got a 120 click unidirectional bezel. This did come to me on a ceramic bezel insert, but it did put in an aftermarket aluminium bezel insert on this and yeah we've got a full monoblock stainless steel case and of course stainless steel shroud for the heimdaller same specs you've got a double dome air coated sapphire crystal nh35 movement in this one uh ceramic bezel insert with that pip at the 12 uh, full stainless steel of course uh, no monoblock case it does have a screw down case back and this one is a claimed 200 meters of water resistance whereas the proxima claims 300 meters prices um the price for the proxima is 150 pounds uh which is going to be around the 200 dollar mark if i'm not mistaken and the heim dollar coming in much much cheaper at around 159 dollars which is about 114 pounds so instantly this is uh, a lot closer to the steel dive uh, because the steel dive now is around 109 perhaps um, and this is 115 and on some stores the steel dive is more or less the same now options uh, so as mentioned there is another option to this with a plain dial nh35 movement which is the mm300 style of dial which you have seen uh, and the thing with proxima the dials are the same um, they've added just many many bezel insert options uh, but now they have done so many different dial versions it's really hard to keep track uh, they've got their own spider dials all sorts everyone's checked them out everyone's got the same issue there's just too many variants and the pictures just don't seem to be clear enough um, on the Heimdaller side it's a bit more simpler so you, you do have a couple of versions you've got bronze pvd rose gold etc but just on the plain stainless steel versions you have uh, the normal sea shepherd the black dial and then you also have, I think, if this fluorescent orange, yellow, and lime green, and you also have, I believe, uh, black, of course, and white uh, in this, you know, Sea Shepherd 
particular format. So both have many, many variations. I think the Heimdallet is a lot easier to choose. Um, Steel Dive does have, you know, the three standard colors, blue, green, and black, of course. So, you know, you've got ample variety between these two, more so than the Steel Dive. Um, but yeah, it's a bit confusing on the Proxima, right? So price, there is still a bit of a difference. So now let's see which one is the better value for money option. Okay, let's go ahead, let's have a look at the dial construction. Um, so with either option, uh, whether it's the NS35 or this funky one, you do have a, uh, a really good quality dial. These are sunburst, um, but we're not gonna do it exact, you like for like comparison. Um, so the dial generally, the Proxima, you know, you got printed text, printed logo, and you do have applied hour markers, um, you know, very, very good quality, thick markers. They all have a polished frame around there. You also have a highlighted date frame. With this one in particular, you've got the cutouts for the days, and you've got the date at the six with a color match date wheel. So they've done a lot to this one. Uh, and the price is, I think, the same between this and the, you know, the standard, um, you know, MM300 style of dial version uh, that I'm talking about. Um, and, you know, the handsets they use are, again, very good quality. Uh, I really do like these. These are fully polished tuner style hands with the lines going across. And you can see they're quite thick. Um, and you've got that SKX style second hand. Amazing loom on the dial. Uh, very good attention to detail. I've not come across a poor dial design. Sorry, a poor dial quality from Proxima, should I say. Um, so yeah, that's great. Um, AR coating, yes, one of the criticisms with Proxima is they use far too much AR coating. So it does distract from the dial. I mean, it's okay here, but you know, when you are outside, that's all you see, just blue glare uh, around there. And yeah, I think it is a bit too much. Bezel insert, uh, they come with many options. Stainless steel, but this one has an aluminium bezel insert, so we can't really judge that. Um, but they also do come with a ceramic bezel insert, loomed option. Uh, they've got multiple, multiple bezel options and also sapphire bezel options. So you can get a lot more in terms of, you know, different materials from Proxima. Now comparing that to the Heimdallah. So what, what do we know about Heimdallah? Again, they do use great hands and they use great dials. Um, and the loom on this is this layered applied loom and it is the same also on the steel dive. Um, we're gonna check the loom out in a bit, but you know, from what from experience uh, with Heimdallah, uh, you know, the loom is going to be good. Now look at the dial, very solid color, very crisp, clear printing, you know, whatever I said, for the Proxima, I can say the same in terms of dial quality and hand quality from Heimdallah. Generally, on most of their watches, they are a step above steel dive in terms of dials and uh, hands. But with this particular model, you know, it's just slightly different to the steel dive. You know, you've got applied logo, shark logo just below the 12 o'clock marker. And you've got C Shepard automatic 200 meters. And you've got these circular hour markers. And then you've got a triangular one at the 12. And uh, you've got a color matched chapter ring and a date window at three with a date frame as well. The AR coating is a lot more subtle on this. As you can see, I think it gives you much, much better legibility. And obviously the fact that it is bright, bright orange, um, you know, you can definitely see that. Turning attention to the hands, you know, they are pretty flat, but they are brushed. And I love these tuna frogman style hands. Um, I think the lines are just perfect and you can get a really really cool visual with this uh, if you turn the hands with the lines there it just lines up so well with the hour markers at the 3 6 9 and 12. so very cool looking watch very nice hands okay so in terms of the major difference, you know, depending on the type of tuner you got from Heimdallah, uh, you know, when it comes to crystal, uh, hands, dial, it is negligible. Uh, you know, it's just based on design. It is, you know, your preference more so than anything. Um, I'd say, obviously with this one in particular, there's a lot more value added activities done on the dial because there's a lot more happening on the dial. With the normal MM300 style dial, um, I can't imagine it to be much more expensive than the one in the Heimdallah, okay? So pretty much stalemate on the hands, dial, um, and the sapphire crystal. I think, you know, extra air coating to less air coating, there should be no price difference. Bezel inserts, as mentioned, this is aftermarket, and they've got a whole host of bezel inserts. And I think the fact that they can do a sapphire uh, is a bonus, but 
you know uh, Heimdall also do stainless steel they do ceramic uh, you know they can do different colors etc so the bezel inserts again not really a distinguishing factor so what is going to be the main thing that's going to help me decide um, which is probably the better watch uh, for the money I'd say it's going to be down to just strictly build quality and the case the bezel the mechanical functionality side of things um, and perhaps you know accessories like the bracelets or straps that they come with so let's just do a quick loom shot and let's see how they both fare against each other in the loom department so let's check out the loom shot on both these watches to my left i have the proxima so you can see this particular version does have a illuminated date and date disc although you know it doesn't come through that much uh, but you know the dial very bright hands very bright as well that blue pip uh, on the bezel insert that's from my aftermarket bezel uh, insert so ignore that tuna yes again still very good um, but what the camera can't see and the eyes can sorry skip focus here is the loom on the dial is ever so slightly duller than the loom on the hands now that's due to the ap applied loom that's been placed on and not and the applied hour markers so the layered loom uh, could do with a few more layers still is very visible uh, and will have a decent amount of longevity the pip is very bright and the hands are very bright it's just slightly lacking on the dial just by a few layers but still against the proxima i think the proxima definitely wins this one so that was an interesting um, result on the loom. I didn't expect that totally, but you can see what I mean here. If you just look at the dial, there's it's just layered loom and it doesn't look very thick. Uh, if anything, the steel dives loom was much, much better than the Heimdallers on the dial because you could see that was raised loom on the dial. Um, but again, it's still very good and the hands you know, easily keep up. Uh, you know, Proxima was a clear winner on the loom department, but again, I gotta emphasize, not by a lot. So the key difference for me is going to lie in the functionality, the, the mechanics of the bezel, uh, and the construction of the case and quality. So let's check out the bezel. Now, obviously with these being shrouded uh, tuners or shrouded watches, it is quite difficult to get a grip. So just bear with me. So the rotation is very nice and crisp um, it just looks quite difficult due to the shred but it actually is once you've got your nails in there it turns with relative ease uh, and as you can hear it very precise clicks and a very nice rotation very nice feel but it's just down to the design where you know they're not the easiest to turn now the heimdallah let's give this a go much tighter feel definitely i'm having to put more force in turning this and there is a little slight springiness to it before it clicks so i'm guessing a probably a very high tension uh, wire that they are using So it isn't back play, but you know, due to the spring, it does come back one. So it is still accurate though, lines up really well. Um, you know, it's easy to turn the proxima, but you know, these things do kind of wear in over time. So the bezel rotation is still quite good. Now let's look at the detailing on the bezel. You can see the scalloping present here. Very nice quality, done to a very good level. Not sharp at all. Very clear cuts, precise. Compare that to the Proxima. Now the scalloping on the Proxima is slightly wider, you can see, and it is slightly more rounded off. So again, just a, just a slight step above the Heimdallah. Yeah, but still, they're both good. It is a very just subtle difference, but you can definitely see it and you can definitely feel between the two. Moving on to the shroud, uh, which is obviously the main part of the case. So you've got linear brushing, which goes all the way around the shroud. 
and you've got very straight edges. Now, build quality, yes, very good. Nothing to complain about there. Crown, some good splines on there, some good machining, gives you a very good grip. It is signed with this, uh, some kind of logo. Case back's got Heimdall, of course, as you'd expect, with some specifications. And uh, polished underside, yes, but fully brushed shroud. Looks decent, looks to be finished quite well. There might be a slight difference in thickness when we get down to here. That part just looks a touch thinner. I believe it is. So thicker around this end and just comes in just slightly thinner. No sharp edges, machined quite well. Now let's compare that to the Proxima. And this is a thing where the Proxima did prevail when it came to versus the Steel Live as well. As you can see, there's just a lot more finishing. There's another level of finishing here, which I'm trying to get at. So in the crown, you see this. Just look how well polished that is. It's curved inwards, fully smoothed off. And also, if you look at the shroud, there's no straight edges. There's just been that extra step taken to make sure it is very smooth. And, you know, there was, I think, about a mil difference between both shrouds, and that is down to the thickness. You can see here, this is quite a bit thicker than the one on the Heimdaller. So let's compare it side by side and you'll see what I mean about the edges. So as you can see here, this edge goes straight up, whereas this one has more of a slope and just a better finish. Also, the top is fully polished as well. So further machining, further processing onto the part, whereas this is fully, fully brushed. Um, the crown also, sp the splines are a bit smaller but it is still quite easy to operate. The fact that it does fit snugly into this shroud here just adds another level into the overall quality of the watch in hand and the case in hand. Because that is, you know, ultimately, it's that is what it is about. When you've got so many different variants of tuners, how do you choose? Um, you know, when I've done a question answer session, people said, what do you look for now? Because there's, it's just so, so competitive, you know, day by day, Alixus watches are getting even cheaper and the specs are, you know, they are exactly the same. So how do you really decide or you don't look that deep into it, right? Um, but if you do, this is what you need to kind of figure out. So for me, the shroud and the bezel finishing is a clear step above the one on the Heimdaller tuner. Um, so now we need to look at bracelets. So in my previous review of the plain black tuner they gave a bracelet wasn't a big fan quite thick quite chunky uh, just didn't look right um and and you know it, it wasn't that special and this watch actually came to me on a waffle strap so you are limited to bracelets when it comes to proxima however this is where i think heimdall is going to get a good win is they do have a very very nice bracelet so nice in fact um i'll show you guys here I have actually put this onto my tuner um, and I'll tell you where this is from, exactly from the Heimdaller tuners. I actually saw a bracelet, this bracelet on a Heimdaller tuner uh, and I got in touch with Heimdaller and I said I'd like to buy just some bracelets and they do sell them on their website, you can pick them up um, and I got me a couple in for my watches. Very, very nicely done bracelet. Uh, I'd say this is second to the Heimdaller Monster homage bracelet which is uh the best quality bracelet to date as far as i can recall so you got 22 mil lug width and then it tapers down to 18 at the clasp um but just have a look at the finishing great taper just look at this curved links at the top finely brushed and then you've got this polished edges here polished highlights to each side of the link chamfered polished very very high quality bracelet it does use split pins but there isn't much lateral movement in there and i replaced the clasp with an aftermarket plain clasp because heim dollars do come with the logo and just have a look at that bracelet very well fitting uh, and a superb bracelet so this one will actually come with this for an extra charge um but as mentioned i bought it separately so heim does bracelet is just so much better and that'll give it i think enough points 
you know, you also want to look at a complete package, you know, which brand, which supply gives you a more well-rounded overall product. Um, I think with the Proxima, you're lacking on the bracelet side. And even though they look good on rubber straps, leather straps, whatever you want to call it, but, you know, I am, like a lot of people, uh, drawn to a really good stainless steel bracelet, which the Heimdaller does provide. Steel dive are nowhere near this quality on the bracelets. Yeah, so I think uh, we are kind of good to finish. I think I've covered uh, pretty much everything I wanted to cover uh, and, you know, get what I wanted to get across to you guys. So just to quickly summarize, 150 close to $200 on the Proxima, and this is coming in at $160, so a $40 to $50 difference. Uh, so then now, as always, you know, is $50 worth the extra refinement? The extra case finishing and the extra features that you can get with the dial um but the heimdaller does give you a very well rounded good all-round watch uh, and they give you a cracking bracelet which you can use across you know different watches this bracelet would suit my uh, seiko baby tuner as well because the good thing with these tuners you know the shroud you know comes over the lug slightly so your bracelet end links do tuck in so pretty much any straight ended bracelet will fit um so yeah i think i'll leave that up to you guys uh you know just as an indicator i own the proxima because i like that extra bit of finesse that extra bit of uh, care taken uh, the extra step of finishing and quality that i can see um but i will say something conclusive is that this is almost identical to the steel dive which makes it uh, even more interesting because the sharp edges on the case or the straight edges and the bezel, you know, everything in hand that I can feel uh, is more or less exactly the same as the steel dive down to the type of crown they use. Uh, the difference with the steel dive, better bezel inset in my opinion because it doesn't have the pip uh, and the loom on the dial is a bit better. But again, I'm the better bracelet. So this is the trouble you're going to have to balance it out ultimately it's going to be a subjective choice which leads you to the choice that you're going to make um, but you know in in terms of factual information that is it from me today so thank you guys for watching hope you guys enjoyed that uh, and i'll see you on the next video